Hi, I'm Jules Taggart, founder of Amp and Pivot, and I'm here today with Sandy Sadu, founder of Sidekick PM. Sandy and I do a lot of projects together. We are the co-creators of Thrive Hive, an online community for women entrepreneurs, and we also host retreats, and we have our next one coming up in Miami in February, and you can find all the details on that at thrivehivelive.com. And a part of what Thrive Hive does is we bring women together to talk about issues that are happening in their business. And we do Twitter chats, we do Google Hangouts like today, and then the retreats. So today we're really stoked because we have Tim Grawl as our guest. And Tim is the founder of Outthink. And he's also the author of Your First Thousand Copies, the step-by-step -step guide to marketing your book. And I recently oh. saw Tim. Oh, sorry. No, I like I like how you have it all tabbed. Uh, oh, like all <laughs> look at that! Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I did some I serious work working. on this. <laughs> I did some serious uh, note taking inside. So, um, I first saw Tim speak at Pam Slim's event a few weeks ago, and I knew when I read his his description of what he was going to talk about in the you know the course description, I was like, okay, this guy's gonna be good. And then he got up on stage and I was like, oh my God, I need to have this book. And so and then they gave us copies of the book and I was like, okay, this is it. I need to know more about this guy. And he really talked about launching your body of work. And body of work is of course Pam Sun's new book that's coming out, which is going to be awesome. And he talked about how to launch your body of work. And one of the things that he does, or I guess the main thing that he does, is work with authors to really build their platform and find more readers and sell more of their books. And I thought since we know a lot of women that are starting to either write books or starting to launch books, and a lot of people who are just launching products and services that can really benefit from what you have to say, we wanted to invite you to join us today. So welcome. We're glad you're here. Thank you. I've been looking forward to it. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about how Outthink began and how you got into the book business. Well, you know, um, Pam, speaking of Pam, she likes to say that hating your job is not a business plan, um, but that's pretty much what happened for me is I hated my job enough that I just decided to quit um, two months after my first son was born. Um, so I quit and started my own business, and I was doing um, online marketing and building websites for kind of whoever would hire me, and for companies small and large and one-man companies and everything in between, and then... Um, I started picking up some authors as clients and I've always been a big reader, I've loved reading my whole life and so I started working with clients like Ramit Sethi and Hugh McLeod and Dan Pink and I just really really enjoyed the work and so about ooh, four years ago now I decided I was just going full time into the author space and I was only going to work with authors and that's pretty much what I've, ever done, I've done ever since is work with authors help them figure out how to build their following, help them figure out how they can um, build uh, relationships with their readers, and then how that translates into book sales down the road and how you can launch your book successfully. So we're working with authors from you know top number one New York Times best-selling authors all the way to authors just getting their first start and working on their first project. So um, it's a lot of fun and I really enjoy it and uh, that's how I got into it. So at what, at what point in the process do people typically come to you? Is it when they're writing the book or like when they're thinking about writing the book or what stage? It's all, it, it depends. You know, it's, I, I've started working with people a week before their book came out all the way to, you know, years before their, ne their next book's coming out. And um, so, you know, I always say the earlier the better because, you know, the longer you're doing things the right way, the more of a following you're going to be able to build and the more likely it's going to turn into book sales. Um, but I, you know, I work with authors all along the spectrum, but, you know, I really like that first part of working with an author to help them, you know, understand how marketing works and understand what marketing really is and then how you can use online tools to do that. And so we kind of do that, um, again, kind of all, you know, right now we're working with clients that aren't coming out with a book for three years, um, all the way to clients that are coming out with a book in a few months. And so, um, of course, the earlier the better, uh, but, you know, it, it just depends on where they're at and when they're ready to go. Awesome. So we've heard you say that authors sell less than 250 copies of their books. 
what do what do the audience building efforts look like for someone who only ends up selling 250 books versus someone that ends up selling a thousand plus copies? Well, it all depends on how many people you're connected to and uh, what kind of connection you have with them. And so, what? But the whole thing, the whole difference between 250 and a thousand is most of us know 250 people. Um, and so we come out with a book, we, whether it's people, you know, like colleagues or friends or your mom, you know, like you can convince 250 people to buy a book. But once you've reached that 1,000 books mark, for most people, you've done something special. You've gotten a, a large amount of people that you don't directly know that aren't in your life, aren't, you know, friends and colleagues or family to buy the book. And that's significant. So um, moving from that 250, that's why that 250 mark exists is because pretty much any author can sell 250 copies of their book, you know, if they ask, just ask enough people, ask all the people in their circle to buy a copy. But once you hit a thousand, you've gone past that and you've done something interesting and you're starting to do some things right to get um, a larger group of people than just, you know, the people you directly touch. So that's why I named it that. And a lot of authors, you know, struggle getting to that first four-figure number. And so that's why I wanted I named the book what I did is so that, you know, that's a tangible number. You know, I'm not saying, you know, how to sell 100,000 copies of your book. Um, but if we can sell 1,000, then all of a sudden the next 1,000 becomes a lot easier. So what are some of the things that help people get to that first 1,000? Well, you have to... Um, build a direct connection with your readers. You know, I, um, I describe marketing, I give the definition of marketing as um, building long-lasting connections with people and then being relentlessly helpful. And that if you do those two things, you're doing marketing. You know, you are building a platform that's going to help you long into the future. And so um, we, I focus on how can we build those long-lasting connections and then how can we um, have the access to be relentlessly helpful moving forward? And I think it takes three things. It takes outreach. It ha you have to have a way to move people from not knowing you exist to knowing you exist. You have to spread content freely and widely. So you have to put your content out in a way where people can interact with it before they have to buy something or before uh, they have to take, you know, give any anything of themselves. Um, and that can look you know, a hundred different ways. It can be putting out PDFs, it can be giving away a book for free, it can be speaking at uh, conferences, um, it, you know, it can be a hundred different things, but you have to put content out in a way where you can help people um, know who you are and, and what you're about. And then you have to get permission. You have to get permission to stay in contact with them long term. And the best tool to do that in all of the online marketing toolbox out there is building an email list. And so what I look at is every author has to solve those three problems. They have to be moving people from not knowing they exist to knowing they exist, giving them content to interact with to know if they're a good fit for the, for the community, for the platform, and then they have to be getting them on an email list so they can have that long-term connection. So with and the email, oh sorry Sandy. No, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> with the email list, um, I think that's one thing, you know, and when you think about selling anything, it, an email list is incredibly important. How do you, and I think that 250 number, again, is really easy to hit. Getting 250 people on an email list is pretty easy. Getting to 1,000 or 10,000 or whatever gets exponentially harder. What are some pieces of content that you think um, are valuable, I guess, to give away to entice people to get on an email list or any list building activities that you think would be helpful? Well, the word I like to use is compelling. It has to be the most compelling content. Um, you know, a lot of authors uh, will give away, say, the first chapter of their book or the introduction to their book, and that's just not very compelling. Now, the information in it may be interesting, but it just doesn't sound very compelling. And so you want to make sure that you understand who you're trying to attract and then give away content that they will be interested in. And uh, you have to word it in a way where it, it's something that they can go ahead and get right now. So it could be a PDF of, you know, the six ways to do X or the, the eight things you didn't know about X. Or if you're a fiction writer, you know, it could be a short story or a backstory, or it could be a collection of past stories that you've written. 
um, you know, one thing I do is a 30-day course. You know, if you go to my website, you can sign up for a 30-day course on how to build a platform. But it has to be something compelling. And I kind of think of this um, as as two separate things. You know, first, I have to build a website. I have to have on my website um, the email list needs to be prominent. It needs to be the main call to action. And I have to have a really compelling uh, reason for people to sign up for the email list. Because if I drive a bunch of people to my website, but I'm not actually, I don't actually have a strong invitation to my email list, I'll lose all those people. Um, so the first thing I have to do is have that, um, have that compelling reason and that email list sign up uh, front and center. And then once I have that in place, I can confidently go out and invite people to the website um, to sign up for the email list. And so for authors, is it important to tie the um, compelling content to the subject of your most recent book or your upcoming book? Or is it just to provide compelling content that's in line with the work that you do? Yeah, I think, um, you know, one thing I talk to my clients about is, first and foremost, you want people to be a fan of you, not any one book that you write. And that's for a lot of different reasons, but the main one is, you know, this may be the first in a long line of books that you're writing that the subject could change from book to book. You know, and I use my client Dan Pinkin as, as an example here, you know, his first book was free, uh, free Agent Nation. It was about freelancing. And, but then he wrote books about like you know, how the brain works and motivation and a, a book on sales. You know, if, if his website and brand was completely free, um, about freelancing, it just it wouldn't have made sense. But he made it you know, about him as an author first. And so what I look at is, yes, you know, if you're working on a project, if you have a particular book you want to sell, I do think it's helpful to connect people to that idea, and that's probably what you're already thinking about and already writing about. But um, you know, what you want to do is just be thinking about, you know, this is the next project I'm working on. Um, I'm probably already writing content around it. I'm probably already creating content and talking about it. You know, it's the, it's top of mind for me. So I find, you know, yes, it will help sales, but it's probably the first thing you're going to think of anyway. Um, but again, I, I kind of scale back to this, you know, what's going to, going to be the most helpful to the people that are following you and give them that. And, you know, every email you send out, every blog post you put up, um, even the, the giveaway to your email list, you know, everything has to be geared towards what is the best for the people that I want to talk to, the people on my list, and how can I help them get what they want out of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that goes back to your relentlessly helpful Marketing is being relentlessly helpful. <laughs> right, yeah. I love and, that. It, it, and it is. You know, you find that um, the more, you know, I've been, um, you know, I try, I've been uh, for, the, for a while now, I've been trying to send out an email every week. And what I found is the more that I send out helpful content, the more it comes back to me. Um, you know, I'm getting in, invited to speak different places. I'm getting invited to things like this. You know, I'm selling more books as a result. Um, and all I'm doing is trying to help everybody. And so, you know, especially in today's world where we can create that long-term connection and continue to communicate, it's the, it's the best, um, most long-term um, uh, way that you can build something that's going to support your entire career. So in your book, you talk about fans and the difference between fans and influencers. Can you elaborate on that and also how we can connect with both those different groups? Yeah, so um, fans are people that will buy your book and influencers are people that will get other people to buy your book. Um, and I try to make that as a broad stroke as possible because an influencer can be the person deciding who's going to be on a you know who's going to be on the Today Show. It can be somebody with a large email list. It can be a blogger. You know, it can be you know all of these different things. Um, but basically, anybody that influences the buying decisions of other people um, is an influencer. They're people that can get other people to buy your books. And then your fans again are people that um, will buy a copy of your book, but they're probably not going to get a hundred other people to buy your book. And it's just important to kind of keep those in mind because you're going to have to communicate with them in different ways. You know, as your fan base grows to thousands of people, 
you're not going to be able to email them all individually or uh, pick up the phone and get on the phone with them individually. So um, what I say is with fans, you do communication that is one to many. So that's your email list, social media, blogging, those sorts of things. Anything where you are putting content out um, and it's going to lots of people at once. And then influencers, typically you want to communicate in more one-on-one. -on -one. So email, uh, like direct email from your inbox, um, uh, phone calls, meeting them at conferences, meeting them for coffee. You know, influencers are people that you're going to want to create that one-on-one -on -one connection with. And because they're going, you know, if you can create that one-on-one -on -one connection with them down the road, that's going to help you sell more books. That's going to help your name get out. So that's how I, you know, it's it's loose, you know, of course there's going to be influencers that are on your email list and um, people that end up on your email list that are influencers, um, but I like to just kind of keep those separate in my mind because um, as your fan base grows, you've just got to, you, you know, and I'm dealing with this now since the book came out, is you know, I, I can't communicate with everybody the way I used to. You know, I can't keep up with the amount of the, the amount of in, inflow. So I'm having to manage like, okay, these are the people I'm going to have one-on-one -on -one communication with, and these are the people I'm going to have one-to-many communication with. Switching gears just a little bit, you, um, or I don't know if it was you, but I got an email from Pam Slim, who I am like her biggest fan, <laughs> uh, this last week, a couple weeks ago, with pre-sale information for her next book, and it included all of these pieces of bonus content. Um, how important is it to, number one, pre-sale your book, and then, you know, the content that goes along with it that's bonus content, is that something you, um, you know, how do you decide what to give and how, and how it all fits in with the content of the book and everything? So, um, as far as driving pre-orders, uh, it depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, if you are trying to get your book on a, one of the major bestseller lists, you want to drive pre-orders um, because uh, all the books between, um, you know, between when your book is first available to the Saturday after the book launches count towards that first week of sales for the um, for the bestseller list. And I don't want to get too deep into how how to get on bestseller list, but. Um, <laughs> But that's the general idea, and so when you're doing a pre-order campaign, you're trying to get as many people as possible to buy the book before it comes out, because all of those sales will count towards that first week. And as far as the giveaways go, you know, when I think of um, when I think of a book launch, you know, I think of well, how can we get our fans, the people I'm directly connected with, um, to uh, uh, buy um, as many copies as possible. And there's three types of people that you're going to be connected to. Um, there's people that are going to buy anything you come out with, no matter what it is. You know, you just have this small group of fans, you know, and Jules, you're probably one of those with Pam, of like, you know, all she has to do is say, I have a book available, and you're going to buy it. No big deal. Yep. <laughs> and, then, um, and then, you know, you have a group of people that no matter what you do, if you picked up the phone and, you know, cordially invited them to purchase a copy of your new book, they're not going to buy the book. You know, so there's these kind of two groups. But in the middle is a group of people that are sitting on the fence. Um, they're interested in the book, but they don't know um, whether they should buy it now. You know, I'll add it to my wish list with 100 other books, and maybe I'll buy it later. Let me wait for reviews to come in, you know, and the, or they just forget that it, they, it's out, you know, and they're not really paying attention. And that's your biggest group is these people that, you know, are interested in buying the book, but they don't necessarily need to buy it now. So what we want to do is see how many of those we can push off the fence onto the side of buying the book now. And that's where a pre-order campaign or giveaways come in because you say, okay, if you buy the book now um, instead of later, you get all of these extra goodies, right? You, I'm going to give you all of these things you can't get otherwise. And honestly, you know, we've all seen kind of the crass version of this. If you are up late watching TV and an infomercial comes on and they say, if you buy now, we'll send you three of these and two of these and 12 of these and it just works because if you're mildly interested and you think, well, i got to buy now to get all this bonus stuff. So um, that's kind of what you're doing. And then as far as what to come up with is to, uh, to do giveaways, um, I just look at, you know, how can we add more value to the book? Uh, the book, by definition, is words on a page, sometimes a few pictures thrown in, but most books are just words on a page. 
and there's so many other mediums that we can, um, you know, we have video and audio and PDFs and images and infographics and all these different things. You know, what can we provide to um, people that pre-order the book or buy the book early that will add more value to the book? You know, will it be a workbook to help them, you know, um, figure out how to implement the ideas in their own life? Is it additional audios to show them, you know, different ways that they can implement the ideas? Is it um, interviews with experts uh, around the ideas in the book? You know, but I look at, okay, here's the book and I wrote it for this type of person and I'm trying to help them get this out of life, you know, what else can I give them to add more value to the book? Um, and I find if I do that, because some people, they'll just like throw in like everything digital they've ever created and say, you get a hundred different things if you buy my book now. Um, and it, to me, that's just, it's just kind of a turn off and it, it honestly doesn't work that well. I've seen behind the scenes and it just doesn't work that well. Um, and so what I find is it's easier to pick a handful of things, a half dozen things um, that are really helpful to people that if they, if they buy now and they um, not only get the book, but they get all these other things, they're going to, the value of the book is going to go up exponentially. So recently you launched something called the 10K Book Experiment. Tell us a little bit about that and why you decided to launch it. So... Um, my book's been out since uh, June 27th, so however long that's been, five months or something. And in that time, I've sold about 3,300 copies. I forgot what I'm at uh, right this second. Um, and, you know, book sales, they, you know, they, they tend to start high and then, you know, slowly trickle off with little spikes here and there. And that's kind of what mine has been doing. And... Um, I was having this conversation with a guy who's been in the publishing industry for over 20 years and edited some very, very famous books and has worked with some very famous authors. And we were having a discussion, and he was talking about how there's this, this 10,000 number is um, a really kind of special number. And what he's seen over and over is that if you can sell 10,000 copies of your book in the first year that it's out, you get this momentum behind the book that it will continue to sell for a long time. So that's what kind of piqued my interest of, you know, I sold uh, the first thousand copies of my book in the first um, two weeks it was out. And and that was, you know, I really had to sell at least a thousand copies of my <laughs> book. Um, so that's done. And, you know, it was continuing to sell. But, um, you know, what's kind of the next goal? What should the next goal be with the book? And so I, I came up with this number of 10,000. And also in working with so many authors and experiencing it myself, there's a lot of kind of shame around our book sales. Um, you know, if, you, if somebody asks you how your book's selling, you don't want to tell them nobody's buying it. You know, so you have to kind of say, oh, yeah, it's doing good. You know, I'm hoping it sells more copies and kind of, dance around it, but I wanted to show, like, you know, this is hard. Like, my book is now, um, in October, it sold, it was selling um, about 10 copies a day, so about 300 copies a month, you know, which is not really how many I'd like to be selling. And, um, and I've also found in my own knowledge, you know, I've worked with over 100 different authors um, over the last four years. And like I said, across all spectrums, across all genres, <coughs> but... Most of my work has either been at the very beginning, kind of getting a platform off the ground and rolling, or kind of at the end, taking a, a, an established platform and launching it. But how do I do that middle part? Like, how do I go from somebody that can sell 1,000 copies to be somebody that can sell 10,000 copies? And, um, and so I thought, you know, since this is what I do and this is what I share, I'm just going to make it public. I'm going to share everything, all my sales figures. Uh, I put the experiment out. Um, <laughs> live so that anybody can see it and um, keep up with what's going on. I'm sending out, I'm putting up a new blog post every week with something I've learned along with in the email I'm giving exact figures of what I've sold, um, promotion opportunities that are coming up and as those happen I'm going to share the results. And my hope is that um, people following it will learn something, will learn from me. You know, I'm going to make some mistakes. I'm going to try things that don't sell books and waste a lot of time. But I'm also hopefully going to try some <laughs> things that will sell books and will help people. 
Um, so hopefully they'll learn with me. And I also just wanted to do it to um, kind of share all the emotions with it. You know, the the you know my last post was about just how how much my pride fights against some of this, and um, and just share kind of the struggle with it. And then also in a personal way, it's like if I actually, now that I've actually put that up. You know, I'm I sit I'm like we're laying awake at night, like okay, I got to figure out how to do this. How am I going to sell ten thousand copies of this thing? You know, and it's actually forcing me, where I you know I was kind of being lazy about it. Now I'm, it's actually forcing me to make some decisions and go after some things that I think will um, get people to buy the book. So it's a lot of different things going into it, but most of all, I just wanted to make it public so that people could follow along so that um, people that are struggling to keep their book sales up won't feel like they're alone, like even the guy that does it for a living can have trouble with it. Um, but um, And also maybe people will learn something along with me and skip some of the mistakes that I make and, um, and uh, make some good decisions for themselves. In the software world, we call that eating your own dog food. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, it's like using your own software when you're when you're developing it, or in this case, like implementing your connection system and doing everything you talk about in the book, right? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, and um, and also just you know, hopefully at the end I'll have a decent case study to show people exactly how things work. So. That's cool. Well, and where can people find you if they want to take a look at the 10K experiment or your grab your book and all of that stuff? Um, if they go to outthinkgroup.com or just Google me, they'll find me, um, and um, all my blog posts are um, are there. I sign up for the email list. That's where you know um, I'm doing the 30-day course. You'll get automatically, but also I'm sending out those weekly updates from the 10K experiment. Um, and then if you want a copy of the book to help me get to my goal, um, plus help yourself sell some books, um, just go to Amazon and look up my name or uh, your first 1,000 copies. It's available there. The Kindle's $3.99. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. It was really fun to talk with you today, and I think we're going to do a little bit of a Q&A here after we stop the broadcast. But I just wanted to show you guys the book one more time. and. To mention, um, I have like all of these tabs. <laughs> There's tons of good stuff in here. Um, so many things to implement. And so, thank you very much for um, for speaking with us today and sharing a little bit about how we can sell more more of our books. Sure. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Thank you.